before the pilgrimage. By accepting the invitation, I was fighting against all my senses. After growing up in the UK and only seeing a war-torn Iraq in the media, I had never visited the Middle East, and my family's experience of the Middle East extends to Lebanese wine. I'm a photojournalist. I had been working for three years. I accepted to walk Arba'in, as it was the most positive, peaceful story about a misunderstood religion in a country and region that had been historically reported negative. I couldn't help but question how as many as 25 million pilgrims walked to Karbala over the course of 40 days in mourning for a man who died 1,400 years ago and it wasn't worthy of global attention. And even now, our buy-in is almost unreported in the West. And so there I was at Najaf Airport with a team of Iranian and Iraqi filmmakers preparing to make a documentary on Arbaeen. For three weeks, we walked Arbaeen via the quiet, quiet pathways in Hilla, along the Euphrates River, and towards the heart of Karbala, via what pilgrims fondly call the Highway of Love. I was moved by the compassion I personally encountered, and also between pilgrim to pilgrim, many of whom had flown from the US and Asia and UK, I was surprised to meet a woman who worked for HSBC in London while meandering our way through these date palm forests towards our accommodation for the night. I've been informed that if you stay in the men's mocabs, you'll experience a strong symphony of snoring. But I can tell you in the women's mocabs, you have to be prepared for toddlers poking you awake and the sound of newborn babies crying. And in my case, I had aunties offering me food readjusting my hijab and asking me 20 times a day if I was married. <laughs> Everyone was there for the same reason, to pay respects to Imam Hussein. And yet we were all on different journeys. While I'm not Muslim, I found the message of Arba'in at an enormously transitional point in my life. And I found many pilgrims had decided to walk Arba'in after losing a loved one or fleeing conflict. Those who had waited much of their life to be there in their 80s and 90s. When we reached Imam Hussein's shrine the day before Arba'in, I stood on a rooftop looking out at a stream of pilgrims and at my colleagues knelt on the floor weeping in the presence of Imam Hussein's shrine. I felt overwhelmed and confused. How could up to 25 million people in peace every year and no one know about it? How could they mourn for Hussein as if he had just died that day? And how could one man unify so many people in one place and yet so, flu so few globally know about it? This is something I continue to reflect on in Iraq as we finish filming and when I return back to the UK. I spent 2018 deeply frustrated by the contrast between my experiences and what the British media spouted. While Arba'in is no doubt a time of deep mourning, there is so much joy to be found too. In the most sensitive and raw of times, we can, as people, be softer than ever, and that is certainly the case for Arba'in. When the men at Heathrow Immigration asked me if I was safe, I told them very simply that the very reason they wanted to interview me was the very reason I had gone to Iraq, to show people it's not what they think it is. I opened my laptop and I showed them my photographs and I showed them these pictures from the pilgrimage. They started to ask me about Shia Islam and what Iraq was like and in that moment three non-Muslim male police officers apologized for making the assumption that I was in danger simply because I'd been in Iraq. We must collectively stand up on the right side of history, stand up against injustice, just as Imam Hussein did 1400 years ago. There's no more important message in my life to share than this.